IBM is playing an ever-increasing role in the communications networking industry. So to find out more about what the tech giant is doing and why, I'm talking with Andrew Coward, General Manager of Software Defined Networking at IBM. So Andrew, great to talk to you again. Thanks for joining us. Now, it's almost nine months since you joined IBM. Uh, can you tell us about your role there and how things are going? Yeah, um, so we started the Software Defined Networking Business Unit at IBM because we really saw a, a massive shift in how networking is taking place. Uh, both the move to software, perhaps obviously, uh, the move to virtualization, the move to cloud, uh, but really the necessity to, to automate these networks at, at, at massive scale. Uh, and so since I joined, um, we obviously have a, an existing portfolio of products, but we've very quickly added to that. Um, so we acquired um, Turbonomic, which gave us a company called Sev1, and Sev1 provides very deep analytics um, around network performance, uh, around the management of those networks. Uh, and later in the year, just a couple of months ago, we acquired Volta Networks, which gives us a great um, IP networking capability, which we're, we're kind of adding into that. Um, so coupled with some existing um, orchestration management products, we're, we're really kind of closing on the problem of what we're calling closed loop automation. Uh, get the analytics information out, make decisions across the network, um, go drive that out uh, and keep the network running. And what would you say are the main challenges network operators face in terms of the execution of their 5G strategies? And how does Open RAN fit into that? Well, we think uh, telcos are kind of behind on on, on where they, they thought they'd be from a plan perspective, not necessarily in, in, in 5G radio, uh, but certainly in 5G core. Uh, and obviously, ORAN to some extent kind of complicates that that further because we're, we're kind of in this massive uh, technology transition shift. Um, and so, so consequentially, we see telcos kind of faced with what we're, we're calling a kind of a, a false dichotomy, a false choice, really, about how to progress their networks quickly. On the one hand, there's this view that, that you kind of have to do everything yourself and, and there's so many different things that you have to build and, and separate out. Uh, so for example, ORAN kind of breaks down a lot of things that were you know, a single vendor before into, into multiple strata and, and that can add to complexity. So that's kind of one side. The, the other choice is to hand it all to a hyperscale cloud provider and, and have them do everything for you. Um, and so uh, we think there's a third way and, and that third way um, it's really about how uh, an integrator, a partner like IBM, can can really drive the um, ability to to take all those those thousands and thousands of choices away, uh, and and really um, enable you to focus on the really important ones around radio, around five G core, around the services. Uh, and we, as IBM, can provide all the infrastructure, kind of north and south bound of that, to to deliver that. Whether you run it in the cloud or in your own infrastructure. And what can IBM bring to the party here? How can it help with these uh, choices and this integration? Yeah, well, essentially what we're, we've created is a, is a combination of software. I'm actually referring to this as, a, as our kind of telco with a whole strategy, um, meaning that uh, from, from a base operating system um, like Red Hat Linux, uh, we're working with many of the raid, major um, radio vendors and ORAN vendors to tune their software to run in a very high performing environment on Red Hat Linux. Um, with OpenShift that then provides all the container management um, and then wrapping around the radio choices and 5G core choices you make with um, intent-based orchestration and management, um, deep analytics, and then of course, uh, IBM consulting all the services that um, we provide that will do the integration up into OSS, BSS uh, and into the cloud, regardless of where you end up running these services. So that kind of wrap around uh, enables you to, as, as a telco, to really kind of make the most important choices. Um, so my analogy is it's kind of like building a house, right? Um, if you ever try to do that, you, you know, you, you're kind of inundated with thousands and thousands of choices which don't seem really very relevant, right? Kind of what kind of nails to use, uh, what type of floorboards or drywall. So at IBM, we really see we, we can take away a lot of those kind of um, th those types of decisions and enable you to focus on what you would normally do in a house is kind of focus on the main things, the, the kitchen, the bathroom, the big decisions that are going to affect your daily life um, and, and the outcomes to your customers in this case. Uh, and so providing that wrap really um, means that you can move a lot more quickly. And, and, and that's really the, the end game here. How can we get to these services, the value of 5G, particularly around enterprise, that's going to be so critical to, to, to driving revenue? Okay, and one of the areas of 5G that's attracting a lot of attention at the moment 
is the potential for private 5G networks. Uh, do you think this is going to be a major market for the telecoms technology companies or maybe the cloud giants or maybe the mobile operators? Well, we think all, all of the above. Um, and for us, we, we really see this as, a, as an industrial kind of IoT type opportunity, particularly. So, so we're taking it as given that, that most industrial um, devices, whether they be robots or sensors, you know, factory floor, uh, and then obviously extended to that into any office environment, uh, will will be 5G connected for the simple reason that um, when a device ships with 5G embedded into it, it's going to be an easy on onboarding um, to any network. It will have ubiquitous service and so on. Uh, so let's just say that you're laying out a new factory floor and you've got um, robots, automation devices. You've got things that are looking at cameras that are looking at the quality of things. All of that, um, when connected to a network, gives you some really interesting capabilities. Um, and a 5G infrastructure, both public and private, means that when that device is first enabled, um, it, if, it, if it can't find something that's local on the, on the plant, it, it can go out and look for radio that's further out. Um, but when you, when you want high resiliency and high reliability, you're going to want to have that radio um, local. And the, the private 5G is, is likely the best way of doing that. Uh, and let me give you an example. Um, so think about quality control on a, on, a, on a factory floor and having a camera that's sensing widgets kind of coming off a, a production line. Uh, as that each widget gets made, uh, that camera is going to look at that and, and make a decision about whether or not it's good or bad, whether it's past its quality just from, from that visual inspection. Um, we think you've got about 40 milliseconds to kind of make that, that decision before it's off, right? That, that's a very fast turnaround. Um, so given that the camera is going to have to relay that information to some machine learning to make a decision, uh, uh, that, that kind of turnaround requires uh, you know, high resiliency uh, network, uh, very low latency as well. So these are applications that we, we kind of, as an industry, I don't think we've necessarily thought through in great detail. Um, but that's what's going to be the driving, driving factor for why private 5G is important. Uh, and, and, and that's why we're pursuing it you know, with all our partners. Okay, yeah, very interesting use cases emerging in private 5G. Uh, now, IBM has had some success recently with the likes of Dish Network and Telefonica. Uh, what led those operators to decide to work with IBM? Yeah, well, I think, you know, when you start with a, with a kind of blank sheet of paper, which, which we kind of did when we started the networking business unit, um, you get to kind of skate to where the puck is going to be, uh, to, to, to use an ice hockey analogy. Um, and when we did that, we, we really looked at how automation should be. Um, and to do that, we, we kind of thought around, uh, what, what are we trying to do from a, a network intent perspective? Um, and what we built, we ended up building, and, and, and the reason that Dish and Telefonic ultimately chose to do this, was we, we're driving automation at, um, for networking at the same pace in these networks as you get in compute. And it might sound a strange thing to say that, but when you think about things like Kubernetes, um, if you were to analyze what happens in the Kubernetes cluster uh, for the course of a minute, for a human to kind of understand that would take almost an hour to kind of understand what had actually transpired through that minute of activity. But networking today isn't really like that. Uh, and so, uh, for example, just making a change to a firewall will, might take an hour, it might take, might take weeks actually, if, if there's uh, you know paperwork involved, which in some companies there are. So we came to this with a, with a simple ambition, which was how do you drive networking automation to be as fast as compute automation has become? Uh, and so how do you make the changes to the network dynamically and drive that through an intent to take a business um, decision or a business uh, ask and translate that to device logic for the many, many different vendors that are in the network? And that's really what we built uh, with the Cloud Pack for Network Automation, which is what um, Dish and Telefonica uh, are deploying. Um, and, and so when you couple that with the fact that um, IBM works with most, if not all of the major networking vendors in integrating solutions, uh, we're really, really well placed to be able to take uh, any of the industry vendors, whether it's 5G radio, whether it's 5G core, any of the infrastructure services and firewalls, and integrate them very tightly into this closed loop automation and, and really, as I say, kind of deliver the promise of, of automation, network automation to the same level we've, we've seen in compute. Uh, and that's really why we got chosen for these networks. 
Okay, really uh, interesting developments there. And of course, this kind of uh, real-time processing and automation, absolutely key to what the operators are trying to achieve. Uh, Andrew, great to talk to you again. Thanks for joining us today and bringing us up to speed with what IBM is doing. Thanks very much. Thanks, Ray. Thank you.